Hi, Danny from the Melbourne showroom. I did do a, um, a Q and A yesterday, asking um, any questions that you might have of me about styling, um, about the showroom, about our business. Twin mummies, oh, hello. Hello everybody, it's lunchtime. What's everyone having for lunch? It's one o'clock. I might have a bag of chips later on, but I have not had lunch yet. So what I did, I uh, compiled the questions that I got and I wrote them down in like an old lady's book because I'm almost a boomer. I'm sneaking in as uh, Gen X. So what I did is wrote them down. A lot of the questions I got were uh, not related to styling, which is totally fine because I said, ask me anything. Um, so I'll pepper those answers into uh, the other stuff that we're talking about. But feel free to just pop any questions into the comments now and I'll get to them because I'll be able to read it. I've got my glasses on. Um, so we are going to save this video. Um, some people that wrote these questions yesterday might not be on yet. So I will, um, I'll start with some of the personal questions about, um, having gone on a TV show and, uh, the fallout. One of the questions I did get was, um, am I under contract? Am I allowed to talk about the show? So I am under contract to, ch to channel nine for, um, I think it's 12 months. I didn't really read the contract. I mean, I glanced at the contract and I signed it, but I don't encourage people to do that. But I'm pretty sure we're not supposed to um, give away any s secrets as such. But if you've got any questions about the show, just um, yell out. And if I can answer it, I will. But I'll jump on to one of the styling questions because we've got a few people on now. No one's told me what they're eating for lunch in the comments. So I assume that you're all on a diet like I am. Um, one of the questions I got was talking about having white bed linen and a black bed, a little bit unsure. This is Shazza 0811, um, wanting to know what color cushions to use with white bedding and a black bed. And that's nice. That's a nice, easy one to answer because it's, um, you've got a really lovely blank canvas there. Um, in fact, I'll just slip on over to one of our beds so that you can have a look what I'm talking about. Um, it's the example that um, Shazza gave, which is a black bed with white linen. Um, what I've done here is I have used uh, gold accessory or gold cushions on the bed, and that is to work back with the lamps and the bedside table and also the pendant. And then we've added a little bit, we've added a black bed runner on there as well, and we've got a black bed end. So I did that, I, the contrast color I choose was a gold, but um, if you had other little accents in the room, uh, like a green or a beautiful peach, something like that, then that's I'd be picking up those colors, but certainly working a black cushion and perhaps a black throw or a black runner in there just to tie it all together. That would be my advice, but you're in a lucky position that black and white are really easy to work with. You'll see we've got lots of black and white in the showroom it just opens up a whole world of opportunity so um, have a look at what the other day call pieces are in your bedroom and you're pretty safe to use anything um, whether you want a pop of color or whether you want to keep it all monochrome um, so that was from shazza thank you um, okay pegs mh has asked cushions and throws for sofas should you try and match the sofa I would not suggest trying to do, an, if you're using a throw, for instance, I would do something in uh, either a deeper shade or a lighter shade than the sofa because we want the throw just to be added contrast. Uh, cushions, you certainly, that's where you can play in with a little bit of colour. I'm going to take you to another sofa because it'll be easier for me to show you there. Uh, so we've got a white linen sofa here. And I've just got a natural throw just tucked in the end. Of course, you can just pull that out. So it's not standing out too much, but it's adding another layer of texture on there. So we're just trying to add interest and layers. Hi, Estelle. Estelle runs our social media. So hi, Estelle. I hope I'm doing a good enough job for you, Dals. Um, and then we've just added some black in there just to work in with everything else. But um, you definitely don't need to match. But if you were going to have, say, black windows, black doors, or gold, something can handle something like that, that you definitely want to incorporate that and then some other colors if you want to. So we don't use a ton of color in the showroom, um, but I mean, we should, 
We can. That will lead me to my next question, actually. Um, what is What are the trends for 2024? And what is in is, will just remind us of our grandmother, for those of us born in the 60s and 70s, and maximalism is in, and that means lots of pattern, lots of texture, I think like a bit of mayhem. Um, it's very eclectic. And so it's a really good opportunity for you to use all those little objects and important ornaments and stuff. And you can layer all those pieces up. Um, I've got notes, of course, yes, but don't need to look at them because maximal maximalism is more, is more, is more. So um, think back to the days when we were using Aztec patterns. You can use stripes and florals. It's all those mix and matches that's in. And um, I had another person ask about the Pantone colour of the year which is peach fuzz which is a really really pretty color and i think back in the day i remember this i'm 52 i remember peach fuzz i had peach clothing it was just it sits in between orange and pink um and i'm a big pink girl so i really really love it i'll give you an example of something that um is peach and how you can work it into your decor so this is an example of the Pantone Colour 2004 Peach Fuzz. Um, this is one of our artworks and it has that beautiful soft peach in it. You'll see it there with some splashes of black. And um, we've also got a nice gold box frame, shadow frame around that. So you can work the Pantone Colour in. If you want to be someone that's on trend with colours, uh, you certainly could do that. And of course, our buyers are the best in the business, so they're always working in the Pantone colours and we've got lovely shades of peach there as well and some oranges and some pink. So it's a really nice uh, soft palette that you can work in. Here's something a little bit lighter, more of blush tones, but with black frame and you could definitely can work that into quite a modern look. I got asked a little bit about artwork, so I'll touch on that now. Should I be calling out all the people that ask me these things? I probably should. Okay. Oh, Tori underscore Sarah White asked, are you going to have those amazing sales you used to have on Telemarine? Oh, yes. I mean, I do need to get back to having those amazing sales, don't I? Um, they were back in the days where we had lots of little accessories. So um, if you haven't been around as long as I have, uh, and remember back then we used to have um, pallets and pallets of, you know, storage boxes and little bits and pieces like that. So I will definitely get onto that. I'll speak to the higher ups about doing some big crash and dash sales, garage sales, if you like. Um, thank you for that, Tori. Um, I'll jump on a personal one. Now I've got tons and tons of personal questions. Is Wes a good stylist? Did he have good style with his home? Uh, he actually had pretty good style, but he's in the middle of renovating. So um, I took him shopping in our beautiful Sydney showroom and he chose the bedhead, of course, with my heavy um, influence. Um, he bought the bedhead I just showed you earlier. He got some lovely white bedside tables and some lamps and his room looks fabulous now. I'll post something on my personal wall a bit later about that. Rita sent a request to be in your live. I bet she didn't mean to do that. I'm going to say yes and she will probably be our upholstery buyer. She's very good. She's had over 30 years experience in the industry. Rita declined. Rita, what sort of friend are you? Um, Rita and I are going to be running a masterclass in the showrooms. Rita will be running the one up in Sydney and I'm running the one in Melbourne. Um, tickets are available online and you can come and uh, work along with us as we uh, live style some pieces, um, some different room settings, some living rooms, bedrooms, that sort of thing. So you can get in touch, feel, ask questions. We put on some bubbles from our sister company, uh, Saddler's Creek Wines. We're lucky enough to um, have such a great company on board. They always provide lots of lovely, sparkling fun for the morning. Uh, so that's what we are doing. Uh, we've got February for Sydney styling class and mine is in March. We've also got some showroom sales coming up, but that will be announced later. Laughing face reader, hilarious, hilarious. She just says she did not want to even come onto my live with me. Okay. Ah, oh, well, I've got reader on the phone. So I did have a question. Let me just go through my many, many questions. These are all the questions I got, by the way. I got a lot of questions. Uh, 
Stella underscore Nikki underscore asked, where do we source our furniture from? That's a really good question. Uh, so our buyers are lucky enough to travel the world to all the big furniture shows and they obviously gain um, inspiration coming out of Europe and we find that uh, interior design often follows fashion trends. Hey, Stella, Nikki. Oh, that was your question. Oh, my gosh, I feel like... We're best friends forever. Uh, yeah, so Reed is one of our buyers, and so her and um, Frank and the other buyers will head overseas quite a few times a year. We've got um, our own factories that we get to make our stuff. So it's inspired by what's going on out there in the world, mostly coming out of Europe. Um, they come up with designs themselves. Some are inspired by other things. And as you'll notice, things just come and go um, if you're long enough to be alive in your 50s or your 60s or your 70s, you'll see that there's been a resurgence of things that we would have seen as kids. And at the moment, um, you'll, we've had a big resurgence of brown. We do have a beautiful, oh yes, Rita, and we design, we, we, and we design to have exclusive. Yes, we do. We make sure that what we're doing is exclusive. So you can't um, go up to another supply and find the same thing. Stella, Nikki, all the furniture is beautiful. I put, oh, good on you, Dale. I love that. Um, I'm jumping around all over the place. I wouldn't make a good Moira on the Today Show, will I? Okay, because I'm jumping around. But someone asked, what are the trends for 2024? And I've made a little list, but I'm going to try and do it. Yeah, Oka is in as well. Thanks, Rita. Would have been nice if you jumped on live. Um, okay. Rita is our buyer. She's going to write some things in the comments, but I'm just going to go through some notes that I've made. Um, brown is really, really huge. It, it has overtaken grey as a neutral as far as what's in um, oh, Paradise Interiors, Gold Coast, my absolute favourite supplier. Oh, my gosh, she's so beautiful. That's Kylie. She came all the way from the Gold Coast to visit me last week. She's a very, very beautiful lady. Um, okay, so we are seeing a lot more browns, even in um, kitchens. We're seeing darker stains in kitchens, some darker stains in furniture. But don't panic because you need to take this with a little bit of a grain of salt. And um, if you're really passionate about interiors, you can always pull in little bits that aren't costing the world, just if you want to sort of keep up with the trends. But if you've got a an all white kitchen and people are now doing dark stains i mean it really doesn't matter obviously so that's just what's coming through in interiors for modern interiors um we're seeing more chrome um and more silvers coming through i haven't quite seen that coming through um in the decor yet but we're definitely seeing it in fixtures and uh overhead lighting and stuff like that for modern homes um i've already talked about the pantone color um and yeah lots more textures and stuff so the ability just to play um, with colour and texture is really important. Angela Lucan, she asked five questions. So she wins for today. What does Angela win? I don't know. If my boss is watching, we need to give Angela a prize because she asked five questions. Tips for artwork, size, hanging, hanging and colours to room, she asked. Okay, so we're talking about scale. Um, scale is really important. You've got to consider the size of the space. I say go big or go home. Honestly, um, having little tiny pissy things on a huge wall is probably one of the most jarring things you can see when you walk into a room. But just for scale, this is a quite a big artwork over a three-seater couch. And that really does fill that space quite nicely. Even if this was a tiny, tiny room, I still would have a piece of artwork that is to scale to the sofa. Now, that could be a series of smaller paintings or prints. It doesn't really matter. We're really looking to dumb down that big space. So um, another question we get a lot is um, if it's a continuous wall and it's all open plan, you've got a kitchen, you've got dining and you've got living, what do you do about artwork? Because obviously we don't want it all lined up on death row. So you might have your artwork in one space. Then you could make a break in the room using something like a bookcase like that and that gives us the break in the room so we're not having just flat pieces you want something that's going to step out from the wall it could be a lovely big plant in a big pot um, it could be a little bit of timber paneling just to break up that space a little bit it's just it's a visual space 
What's a good for a corner spot in a lounge apart from a lamp? Oh, okay. That was from Stella. Uh, yeah, I mean, plants. I would please do not judge me. I was away at Christmas time and my plants have some brown leaves. So I'm just show you the one that's not dead. Um, you just something like a really big pot with some height. I can't show you anymore because, like, I might have killed the plant. Um, big oversized pots um and if you don't want to use something like a bookcase just something that's got some height behind it or if you can you could use a side table with a lamp on it which i know is just another lamp but um that's a good thing to put or a floor mirror we use a lot of floor mirrors in decor so like this floor mirror or this floor mirror we have a plethora of floor mirrors but that's a good way to put a break um in the wall Gosh, I hope I'm not missing any questions. One of the biggest mistakes people make, go big or don't go at all. Okay, that was from Paradise Interiors in Gold Coast. Yeah, it, it really is a little unnerving. It's it, And you might not know what it is that doesn't feel right, but often it's just that the scale is not right in a room. Um, and I stayed at my girlfriend's place the other week and she said to me, this just doesn't, what's not working? And I said, you've got tiny, tiny pieces of artwork on big, huge walls. And we just messed around with it for a little while and she was really happy with the result. But, um, you know, it doesn't need to be artwork. It could be something like a big oversized mirror. This is the Birch Grove. It's one of our um, best-selling mirrors there. So that's, yeah, go big or go home, we say. Um, so understanding the scale of the room, um, is probably the, the first thing you need to consider um, the space, how big it is. If it's a small space, if it's an apartment, I'm still going to suggest that you go big um, because lots of little pieces is what makes it feel small. Um, you'll also want to consider getting the biggest rug you can get your hands on. You don't need to spend a lot of money. There's plenty of suppliers out there doing big rugs. Um, rule of thumb is you want your furniture to be sitting on the front of it. Um, the legs at least, something like that. Um, and that's going to make your space feel bigger, even if it is a small space. So a small rug um, is not the way to go. Oh, what did I write here? Yeah, it looks small and disconnected. I think I'm doing well. I have not even looked at my notes more than 10 times. Okay, this is an Angela question. Um, what's my own preferred interior style? My style is um, determined by my dogs. And I used to have beautiful white couches. My whole house was um, just neutrals and whites and it was so beautiful and calming. My dog had nine puppies. And no, anyway, that all went to God. But um, I do um, have a good option for that. We've got covers, um, sofas that have slip covers on them. And when I had my dogs, unfortunately, we didn't have the chocolate one at the time, but we have a slip cover sofa um, in a beautiful brown. And I did mention it last week, but. Brown is um, very, very big. Big. It's been around for a little while now, but it's um, not going anywhere soon. And this is a slip cover sofa. So that's one that we can, um, I, think I would have got, but we didn't have it at the time. So those covers can actually come off, which is great. So there's all those options for you. Um, but my personal style, I've actually got a tobacco sort of leather sofa and my dogs have made it look lived in. Isn't that lovely of them? Their little paws scratching at the leather. I did get a question from, I hope I'm not all making you seasick, about leather. Okay. Oh, this is another Angela Lucan question. How to soften leather? Um, okay. So I did look into this uh, because obviously you could just buy a leather conditioner, um, but also my favourite thing to use at home is vinegar, obviously on chips, but also um, you can use equal parts vinegar and water um, just a slightly dampened cloth with that and that will help um, soften the leather but really leather just needs to be used and used and used and it will become su um, supple and it will soften over time but if it's in a room that you're not using very often like if you've got a Chesterfield or something they can feel quite rigid um, that's that's something that you probably would want to just run some um, leather conditioners over um, Angela, again, what's in and out for 2024? Oh, I don't, this is the right. Oh, okay, I'll answer it. This is, this is not my um, opinion necessarily, but this is what the industry um, is saying. I'll give you some no-brainers, think mistakes that you, can't, that you want to avoid, and then I'll go into what is considered out because 
you, you've got to take all of this with a grain of salt. Absolutely don't go changing things, especially big ticket items. You can always make little changes with overhead lighting and um, accessories and just painting your walls rather than throwing your kitchen out with the bath water because it's not the on-trend colour. But um, I'll go through some mistakes that people often make, um, and that's I've touched on it, is using furniture that's too small for the room. So if you've got a lovely big room, you need big oversized pieces. Um, even if you've got a small room, less pieces, still generous sizing. Um, not using long enough pendants if you've got tall ceilings. Um, you need to try and connect the room by bringing, dropping down the uh, length of a pendant. That's another mistake people can make is having too short of a pendant. Wrong size rugs, we've already touched on that. That's, um, that can make or break a room actually, and you don't need to spend a lot of money on a rug. And incorrectly um, hung art, I've already touched on that as well. So they're all that I would consider no-nos. That was another question that I got. And Taylor Dot asks, how long have you been styling? Did you study or did your career just evolve? Yes. My career just evolved. I've been doing this for 30 plus, I could lost count. I started when I was 19, I'm 52, whatever that is in math. Um, and I started at Freedom as a 19 year old. My auntie and uncle owned the store and I started there in admin as a PA. And then I just sort of stayed in the industry. I had my own businesses, had my own stores. And I've been with this company for 21, oh, 20 years. This is my 21st year with the company. So um, I've just evolved into it. I think if you've got the knack, the flair that it's, yeah, that you can just roll with it, that, which is what I've done. And I listen and watch very closely to what our, um, our designers are doing up in Sydney. They've got a wealth of knowledge as well. And all right, I've answered that. I'm trying to get through all the questions. Um, cushions for sofas, what colours are on trend? I did that. Okay, Travelling Terry asks, what colours are on trend at the moment for a beachy slash contemporary family room? Um, I would suggest going, um, oh, Paradise Interiors, you can jump in here as well because you do a lot of white spaces, but I would say um, natural timbers work really well. Um, little pops of black if you want to make it a little bit more modern. Um, just small accents, obviously lots of neutrals. There's some beautiful um, colourways out at the moment with paint if you want to avoid having an all white space. There's some lovely ivories, just wanting to obviously avoid yellow undertones. Um, you could go, there's many different beiges and torps and stuff that are around at the moment. So I think if you want it to still look quite beachy, you would keep it quite light. Um, and your accents, of course, blues like what's behind me and greys are always great in those spaces. That, that colour palette's not going anywhere. It's really soothing. Um, and our brass, brass is a really good accent to put in there as well. Um, you said your space is quite modern, so you could switch that out for um, chrome or silver finishes, which has made a comeback as well. Um, that would be my advice for that. Um, I think I've nearly tapped on everyone's questions. The rest of them were just about me. So switch off if you don't want to listen to something about me. But um, I don't know, I had about 60 questions. I won't go through them all. I'll do that over on my personal page. But um, someone did ask, do I, um, do I do full glam on days when I'm feeling down? Um, who was that from? Dibisev. Um, I do full glam every day. I do full glam to take the bin out. And I think if you're not feeling good about yourself that day, it's probably a good excuse to do it. But I enjoy doing it. And that's why, I can take my glasses off now, finish reading. Um, that's why I don't, I always want to feel good about myself. So I choose to um, always spend the time in the morning. I get up an hour earlier than what I need to, to make sure that I can throw a face on and, I mean, the hair's a bit of a mess, but um, yeah, that's the answer to that. Um, my teeth are my own. I got that, I got heaps of pee. I must have fake looking teeth. They're my own teeth. I did Invisalign age 51. No, age 50, I did Invisalign because I had crooked teeth at the bottom. I got tons of questions about my pearls. I'm not wearing them today, but I love pearls. Um, I like real pearls, freshwater pearls. I like them to be an irregular shape, like these earrings. I have no idea where they came from. My friend gifted them to me. Um, that was another question I got. The rest are all makeup related. So I'll jump over um, 
tonight after Pilates and answer all those questions. But um, I'm going to continue to do the styling tips. So if, I'll put out some more um, little videos so that people can jump in. I know I talk a lot and I talk fast, so hopefully you understood what I was saying. Um, but, yeah, thank you for those that listened in. We'll be saving this to our page if I can learn how to save it. Um, have a lovely lunch. No one told me what they were eating, so happy dieting, everybody. And I will no doubt speak to you next week. Just watch me trying to fumble to turn this off now. Mm -hmm. Did I turn it off? No. Oh, my God. Stay with me, people. Stay with me. Stay with me. Oh, my glasses are from iKeeper. I know someone's going to ask me that. Oh, God. Someone jump on. Steph, jump on. Someone tell me how to turn this thing off. Oh, someone's, oh Stella, you're nice. I'm not starting all the time. Hang on, guys. I think I just pressed live. No, I don't. Oh, God, this is awkward. Look how awkward this is. How do I say goodbye? Doesn't matter. We'll just stay on forever. Everyone? Okay, it's all right. Oh, I've worked.